Good morning to those who are in South Korea and good evening to those who are in Brazil. Welcome to day two of the 10th edition of Brazil Korea Entrepreneurship Lecture Series. As we have different panels with a different audience during the four day event, we will repeat the opening remarks before, before we start the panels so that everyone has the same opportunity to comprehend the value of each panel. Our ultimate goal is to create an ecosystem to promote the entrepreneurship relations between Brazil and South Korea with the collaboration of the experts and entrepreneurs engaged in this matter. I am Sujong Ko and I am founding partner of Golden Oak Consulting and founder of Brazil Korea Entrepreneurship Lecture Series. Golden Oak Consulting is a financial advisory in mergers and acquisitions based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And through our network and team of experts in and out Brazil, we support the entrepreneurs and investors to thrive through their business. We have been serving our clients since 2016 and we will complete seven years next year. In parallel, as immigrant in Brazil, being originally from South Korea, I was given the opportunity to create a very exciting initiative to support entrepreneurs interested in developing the relations between Brazil and South Korea through a series of lectures by the experts in diverse areas, which operated under the name of Brazil Korea Entrepreneurship Lecture Series. Since its foundation in 2016, we hosted nine editions of the lecture series. Before the COVID, we used to host in-person private events with around 50, 60 people to share the expertise and experiences among the speakers and attendants. Then we had the COVID, and even during that challenging period, we did not stop the project and kept doing our lectures lecture series when finally we also brought as guest speakers based in different countries such as South Korea and United States. Due to that experience we accumulated, we are today hosting in real time the 10th edition with the distinguished speakers and participants from South Korea, Brazil and United States where many overseas Koreans and Brazilians reside. Therefore, I am deeply honored to welcome our guests to our online event and invite each one of you to make the best use of the following panels during the event. Following the day one that brought a very interesting panel on tax issue involving cryptocurrencies and ESG, today we will have more, fi uh, more panels to go during, uh, and we are gonna have more five panels during the following days on various subjects such as cross-tech, entertainment and media, water and sanitation, energy, cross-border venture capital opportunities, as well as investment and working visa modalities. I would like to express my words of gratitude to those who supported us to bring this 10th edition to, re to reality, including our Korea International Trade Association as co-organizer, BR Visa, Bongjia News, Jonachim, Korea Foreign Assist Center, Brazilian Institute for Development of International Business Relations, and many other institutions of great prestige serving the entrepreneurship ecosystem in Brazil and South Korea. Now, I would like to start our program of day two. First, we are going to have the panel two on uh, working visa, investment working visa alternative in Brazil, and cross-border venture capital investment opportunities, Brazil, Korea. In sequence, uh, we will have the showcase of Brazilian startup and the testimony of the participants and speakers in the past editions. We are planning to finish our day two before 10 p.m. Sao Paulo time and 10 a.m. Seoul time. In order to optimize our time and resources, we have chosen the format of the panel where the speakers will have time to do their presentation and the moderator will address the questions. 
So our first speaker is Juliana Valente Ricard. Juliana is a lawyer and global mobility expert and partner of Mitico Advogados and a Brazil visa, PR visa, specialized migration consultancy, responsible for all the necessary advice to the Brazilian, uh, to the global mobility of expatri expatriates of great diversity of multinational companies and independent individuals. Juliana is expert in global mobility with experience in assisting institutional clients and individuals, developing new businesses, implementing new projects and team management. Her topic is investment and working visas. Juliana, the floor is yours. You are on mute. Thank you very much for the introduction, Sue. Good evening and good morning. It's a pleasure, great pleasure to be here. As Sue has introduced, I'm a lawyer and a global mobility expert. I myself have been an expatriate. I have lived in Switzerland, in Brasilia and Sao Paulo here in Brazil, in San Diego, California. I have worked with migrants from all around the world in my past experience in Banco Votorantim, in Machado Meyer Advogados. And for the past seven years, I have been here working at, as director of BR Visa. The idea today is to give a brief overview of investment and work visas here in Brazil. I'll be speaking about a couple of investment visas and also some important work visas here in Brazil. As you can see, we by each visa, we have a link to, to, the, to an article that have more specific information on this visa. So later on, when we share this presentation with you, you can check these links and learn more about any of this type of visa that might be of your interest. We'll begin speaking about the investor visa. The investor visa has as one of its main requirements, the investor visa is a visa for a person, a migrant from abroad that wants to invest in Brazil. It has its main requirements, the proof of foreign investment in Brazil, in a Brazilian company of at least 500,000 reais, which is around $100,000. This value can be reduced to $150,000 if it's demonstrated that the activity of this company will be for an innovation activity. So the main requirement will be proving this, in this investment and also presenting a business plan execution period of at least three years that will include the business definition and the job or income generation and the venture purpose. As peculiarities of this visa, we have that the Ministry of Justice may verify the physical existence of this company and that the investor is carrying out the activities that, it has, that he has proposed. And the, ma the maintenance of this residency authorization of this visa is linked to the analysis and proof of the exist of the execution of the business plan. The another peculiarity is that the investor will become a tax resident in Brazil automatically. As soon as he has this visa approved and he enters the country, he will become a tax resident here in Brazil. With regards to time frame to the time frame. The issuance of this visa takes around 30 days from the date of the process is filed, and it will be valid for an indefinite period. The, the only requirement is that the visa is conditioned to the fulfillment and execution of the business plan, which will be checked by the Ministry of Justice. The other investment visa we have here in Brazil is the real estate investor visa. It's a new and recent visa. It's very similar to the idea that we have seen in many other countries abroad as Portugal, USA. So it's a visa for those who want to invest in properties here in Brazil. So the main requirement is the acquisition of a property here in Brazil with foreign investment. It can be built or under construction and the minimum amount of this investment is of at least 700,000 reais 
when it comes to a property in the north or northeast region in Brazil, or of one million reais when it comes to other regions. As peculiarities, we have that if the minimum, if the once you have, you can also buy properties that are of more than one million reais, and in this case, the value that exceeds this minimum minimum value can be paid in installments. And the investor must remain in the national territory for at least 14 days during a two-year period, which means the real estate investor, he does not need to live here in Brazil and reside and be here full time for his visa to be valid. The only requirement is that during a two year period, he comes and stay in Brazil for at least 14 days. The time frame, it also takes around 30 days for this visa to be approved and it will be the visa will be valid for four years and this validity period may be renewed. Having having spoken about the the two different um, the two different investor visa, we're talking now about the work visas. We have the labor agreement visa, which is the visa for the foreigners that come to Brazil to to work under a labor agreement with a Brazilian company. So as main requirement, we have the labor agreement between the migrant and the Brazilian company. We have proof of qualification as this migrant must meet certain qualifications to be able to, to be hired for the job. And we also need to comply with the ratio of two Brazilian employees for every migrant employee. And the same ratio also applies to the payroll. Two thirds of the payroll must be for Brazilians and one third must be for the migrants. As peculiarities, we have that the employment agreement between the migrant and the Brazilian company will be governed by Brazilian law. This migrant may not perform management activities or represent the Brazilian company. If he intends to do so, we must apply to a different type of visa. That is the next visa we will speak about. And the migrant becomes also, this migrant will also become tax, tax resident automatically once he enters the country with this type of visa. About the time frame, this visa also takes around 30 days to be issued and it's valid for the period of the labor agreement. So if the labor agreement is for one year, the visa will be valid for one year. If it's for two years, the visa will be valid for two years. The next work visa we'll speak about is the commanding position visa is the visa for migrants that come to be directors and members of the board of, the, of board of companies here in Brazil. The main requirement is formal indication of this migrant to such position in a Brazilian company, and that this Brazilian company that is indicating the migrant for the commanding position receives a foreign investment of at least 600,000 reais. This investment may be reduced to 150,000 reais as long as the uh, company has a business plan that demonstrates the company will generate at least 10 new jobs in a two year period. The peculiarities about this type of visa is that it's tied to the company and to the exercise of the commanding position, which means if the, the migrant ceases to be administrator of the company or to have this commanding position, the company must inform the Ministry of Justice and this visa will be cancelled and it, it's bonded to the exercise of this commanding position. In this type of visa, again, the, the, the migrant will become tax resident automatically once he enters the country with this visa and will have to comply with all the Brazilian tax obligations here. This visa also takes around 30 days to be issued from the day we filed the process, and it's valid for indefinite period or limited to the deadline established in the Corporate Act, which means if the, co if the Corporate Act of the company establishes that the, the migrant will be manager of the company for two years, then the visa will be valid for two years. Or if it's for indefinite period, then the visa will be valid for an indefinite period. Now, having spoken about the two different visas that 
or for investment in Brazil. And also the two most important visas that are that are bonded to the Brazilian company, which was the labor agreement visa and the commanding position visa. Now we are all going to speak about the two last visas that do not have an employment relationship with a company here in Brazil. The first one is the technical assistance visa. It's a visa for foreigners that come to Brazil to provide technical assistance services here in Brazil. When we have this visa bonded to the purchase of an equipment from abroad, the main requirement is the document issued from the federal revenue in Brazil that demonstrate that there was uh, an equipment brought from abroad, abroad and it is what's going to justify the technical assistance service. The other case, the other case is when the assistance of the equipment ar arises from a contract. So we have a service providing agreement between the company, a company here in Brazil and a company abroad. So the company abroad is rendering service to the company here in Brazil. In this case, the main requirement is a service providing agreement. And at last, we have technical assistance services that are provided among companies from the same group. In this case, the main requirement is the, the cooperative agreement between the companies from the same group, and we must demonstrate the associative bond of these companies, demonstrate that they are companies from the same group. The main peculiarity about this visa is that the, co the Brazilian company that requests the residence permit will be responsible for the migrant here in Brazil. And also, this visa has no relate the migrant that comes under this visa has no in the same way that has no employment relationship with the company here in Brazil and shall any employment relationship be detected between the migrant and a company in Brazil the visa will be cancelled different from the other visas we have spoken this visa does not make the migrant automatically tax resident in Brazil however if he stays in the country for more than 183 days, as will happen to any other person even that is here under other types of visa, he will become tax resident. When it comes to time frame, this visa also takes around 30 days to be approved. However, if proven urgency, the visa may be granted within five business days. This visa is usually valid for one year. However, when it's bonded to a warranty clause, it will be valid as long as the warranty clause is valid so that the, the company that is providing the warranty can provide the necessary technical assistance. Now, as our last visa, we have the visa for transfer of technology that also has a main as a main requirement, the simplified training plan which is the plan, which is a plan that will have the, the scope of the training for how many Brazilians the, this professional training will be done, where the training will be perfor performed, what are the expected results. So the main requirement is pre presenting a, a training plan. The other requirement is the service providing agreement or the cooperation agreement between the company abroad and the company here in Brazil. When they are companies from the same group, we also must demonstrate this associative bond. As peculiarity, this visa also does not have an does not bring an employment relationship between the, the foreigner that is coming for the training and the company here in Brazil. We need to indicate to the Ministry of Justice where this training will occur, where the activities will be performed, and if there are any changes, the Ministry of Justice must be communicated as well. And again, here, the migrant does not become automatically tax resident in Brazil. He will become tax resident in Brazil with this visa only if he stays more than 183 days in a 12-month period. As most of the other visas, this visa is also issued in around 30 days from the, the date the process is filed, and it will be valid for up to one year. So this is a, a brief overview of some very important types of visa here in Brazil. Uh, I thank Sue and all of you for the opportunity of sharing with you these different forms that migrants can come to Brazil. And I'm at your disposal for any questions here after the presentation or also through email as we'll share our contacts. Thank you. Thank you for your excellent presentation, Juliana. 
So I have a few questions for you. The first two question is how much time in advance is necessary to start uh, the visa process? I think you are on mute. Can yes, you start I'm sorry. your answer? We strongly, re we strongly recommend that the visa process starts with at least six months in advance. This is because each country has their own procedure to issue different documents. So as normally there are documents such as a non-criminal record certificate, birth certificates that must be issued for the visa process. And depending on the nationality of those of, of the person applying for the visa, the, the document must be apostyled or legalized and obtaining all these documents may take time. So we recommend at least six, six months in advance to apply for, for one of these types of visa. Thank you. Uh, the second question is uh, in case of investor visa, may the migrant be appointed as administrator of the company uh, and when will that be possible? Okay. In order to be appointed as administrator of a company here in Brazil, you, if you're not Brazilian, you must have a permanent visa, which now is called a residency authorization for an undetermined period, which means that the investor, in order for him to become administrator of his company, he has to first have the visa approved. So once he has the company duly constituted here in Brazil, for a couple of months, he will have to have a different administrator because he will only be able to indicate himself if, if that's his will as the administrator of the company once the, the he has the appropriate visa to be the administrator. So usually the how the process works is the partner constitutes a company here in Brazil. He will be the shareholder of the company, but he will appoint a different administrator. Once his visa is approved, if he wants to also be the administrator of the company, he will be able to apply for the administrator visa. Thank you, Juliana. So in, uh, in order to promote more business opportunities between Brazil and South Korea, it is fundamental to have a deep understanding on available types of visa to facilitate the international mobility of professionals. So we look forward to seeing more South, South Korean companies coming to Brazil and vice versa. So if there is any question to be answered, Juliana, please feel free to answer, okay? Thank you very much. And now um, our next speaker is uh, Anibal Mesa, partner at Plataforma Capital. Anibal Mesa has 14 years of, pri uh, of private equity and venture capital experience and eight years of consulting experience at McKinsey and Bay Company. Anibal performed one of the biggest exits to date in the Brazilian VC community uh, through the sale of Buscapé, a Brazilian search company, in a first tranche to Boston-based fund Great Hill Partners and later to Naspers from South Africa. Anibal was also an investment director at Temazek Holdings, on Asian Sovereign Wealth Investment House. Having established the Brazilian office in 2008 and executed the office flagship investments such as LAN Airlines, NetShoes, and VisaNet. The topic of Anibal's presentation will be connecting the dots, cross-border venture capital investment opportunities across Brazil and South Korea. Anibal, please. Hello. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, have a good night to everybody. I will try to share here uh, a slide here. Let me see. Can you see this slide? Yes. Okay. So, um, full screen. Okay. Uh, my topic will be the cross-border venture capital investment opportunities between uh, Brazil and Korea. Um, before starting, I want to provoke a little bit the Koreans. The Chinese have been much faster than the Koreans. 
Although the Koreans started and arrived in Brazil in the 70s, we have a big colony of Koreans in Brazil, in Bom Retiro, etc. Uh, I don't know exactly, Sujun knows much better, but probably more than 100,000 uh, uh, Koreans. The Chinese were much faster than the Koreans. Now Alibaba uh, also with uh, uh, Alibaba, uh, 99 taxes, etc. The Chinese have bought several uh, technology and invested in several technology companies. Uh, before starting, I want to talk a little bit about the framework of thinking. Uh, I, I understand Koreans like to think a, lo a lot before investing. However, in technology, if you think a lot, you lose time. Uh, you lose time because things move very fast in technology around the world. So I'll give an overview about us. We started in 1999. Uh, we were the first venture capital in Brazil. We executed the biggest VC exit through the sale of Buscapé uh, through Naspers. I don't know if you know Naspers, but Naspers is the owner of Tcent, which is also the biggest Chinese company. So we sold basically our company with about uh, 400 million dollars in cash to to Tcent. Uh, we have a focus in education, healthcare, consumer, financial service, uh, software service, mobility, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all types of mobile applications. We have invested in several companies across Latin America, and we have worked uh, in Korea, Singapore, Thailand, China. Me personally, I worked for LG Telecom in 1999 in Korea. I lived in Korea in 1999, and I worked for Temasek, which has close ties to China. So we have a lot of experience with Asia. We are a fund manager registered with the Brazilian SEC. Next one. Mm -hmm. A little bit of our experience. I will talk about myself since our partners are not here. I have more than 20 years of experience in venture capital. I was an investment director of uh, Temasek, which is the sovereign wealth fund of uh, Singapore. We invested about $1 billion in just three years in Brazil. I was the managing director of uh, Porto Capital, which is the biggest uh, insurance company in Brazil por of Porto Seguro. I worked for eight years with McKinsey and Bain Company, and I uh, graduated in computer science and also in business from Chicago. Uh, um, a little bit about our track record. Uh, we made investments with all the major guys, Intel Capital, uh, Monashis, uh, Redpoint, everybody you can think about. A little bit about our investments. Uh, when you think about Brazil, and this will be good about our framework when we talk about investments across Brazil and Korea, Brazil has is a is a third world country which is growing very fast because of a growing middle class population. So, what are the good uh, like sectors in Brazil? Mobile, consumer, education. Our population is becoming older, so health is very important. And all sectors related to tech, and you say, wow, tech or the, uh, the American companies can compete with Brazil in tech. No, 
because we have our own uh, uh, own uh, things like in taxes, we, we have our uh, very uh, specific in taxes, uh, things that are on to our country. So we invested in uh, net shoes, boo box, grubster, direct talk, prompt media. I'll talk a, le a little bit of the companies. Net shoes, IPO it on the NASDAQ. It was the it is the biggest shoe seller in the world. It sells more than six million sneakers uh, every year. Uh, Grubster is the like a, is a restaurant reservation company. Uh, Direct Talk is uh, for co customers to talk directly to companies. Prompt Med is a medical record company that. Uh, uh, hospitals and doctors can record all the all, all the consultations. Cato Bolsa is the leading university web based web based placement agent in Brazil. It uh, places about six million students every year in Brazil. Uh, que Magico, we just sold to one uh, company that's on, on, on the NASDAQ, which is System Ari, Aridsa, we sold last year, is the first collaborative, uh, collaborative education system for K-12 in Brazil. So why Brazil? Uh, why Brazil and why Korea? Brazil has a large population, size, GDP, and digital base. We have a population of 209 million inhabitants. We have a territory of 8.5 million kilometers, number five in the world. GDP, about nine, 10, 11, but it's a big GDP in the world. And the digital base, we are like number two in Uber, Facebook, Google. Like when you look at the profit, base of Google, Facebook, we are the number two. So we are a big internet audience of uh, about 149 million people. We have an exceptional startup and venture capital ecosystem. From 2009 to 2021, to 2021 uh, we had several IPOs on the NASDAQ, such as PagSeguro, Stone, XP, several IPOs in Brazil, Vitex, etc. More than 15 new unicorns in the last 12 months, probably were in the top three in the world. Strong universities and accelerators, new players entering the market. So the Japanese, although the Korean have been here for many years, the Japanese recognize that, that Brazil is a strong market and SoftBank established a $5 billion fund in Brazil, Tizen, Nasper, the Chinese. However, the Koreans to establish investments, especially for companies that have bases in Brazil, which are the Korean. So the Korean are really missing a big opportunity, which the Japanese, the Chinese recognized much, uh, much earlier. Uh, Brazil Latin, uh, what are the key characteristics of our markets? We have opportunities for asset light, low investments, growth, middle class, scalability, we are probably the biggest smartphone adoption uh, countries in the world, together with Korea, together with Japan. Uh, key sectors, fintechs. Fintechs, we have several unicorns in Brazil. The fintech sector in Brazil is really great. Education, edutech in Brazil, we have like more than 40, 50 million students that are eager to get uh, technology opportunities. Health tech. Health tech, our health system has uh, lots of uh, opportunities for technology companies to innovate, 
mobility, agriculture, consumer, sharing economy, Internet of Things, security. So we like developed a, a framework that a, a, comp a, 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 a Korean company could come here and invest in 20 companies with really small money, like of 300K, uh, 10 companies with 1 million, eight companies with 3 million, like not a lot of big uh, money for a, a Korean company and really start to, to invest in Brazil. And uh, what's the opportunity? And this is the graph that I want to show. Uh, Korean companies can come to Brazil and explore a big market that is much bigger and easier than China and Japan to, in, to grow their companies like uh, uh, of, uh, of entertainment, lifestyle, culture, education, smart factory, fintech, but uh, Korean companies are not really taking the opportunity to test bad their companies in Brazil, which is a easier and much uh, faster growing market um, than several in Asia. And for Brazilian companies, what we see the opportunities. We had several companies in Brazil that have expanded abroad, such as, like for example, Gimpex. Gimpex is a gene company that uh, basically uh, gets uh, the idle uh, capacity of genes and uh, shares it to companies, to consumers. It has expanded very fastly to uh, United States and uh, Europe. We see a lot of opportunities for a company like this to expand to Asia, to Korea, use Korea as a headquarter to expand to Asia, to Japan. So we see Brazilian companies using Korea as a test bed to expand to Asia. So it's an insight for the Korean med, uh, market and a test bed for the Asian market. Next one. Uh -huh. Yeah, I believe that's it. Yeah, that's this. Thank you very much. And uh, we hope really that uh, Koreans take the opportunity to see the Brazilian market as a good market for Korean companies to come to invest, especially companies that have a really good opportunity in Brazil and bring Brazilian companies to uh, expand in Korea and uh, use Korea as a test bed. Basically, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your excellent presentation, Anibal. Uh, I have a few questions for you. Maybe you have already explained uh, in your presentation, but it's important to reinforce. So the question is, um, what are the main segments of investments in South Korea for Brazilians and vice versa? And what are the main challenges? Okay, the biggest segments for Brazilian companies to go uh, to Korea are like uh, education, healthcare. Like we have companies in healthcare, education that can uh, use Korea as a test bed and then expand to China. And then Koreans ask, why, why am I going to invest in a Brazilian company that's going to, uh, to grow to China and Japan? Because it's good. You are going to become an early partner, much earlier than any Chinese see this company. Next question is, what's the opportunity for Korean companies to come to Brazil? I see that, uh, like, when you go to China, when you, uh, like, there is government. The government in China is not easy. They have lots of laws, lots of regulations, etc. Also, Japan, uh, e e even the uh, digital adoption of Japan is not as the same as Brazil. Brazil is more advanced in digital adoption than Japan. 
So Brazil has 200 million people, which is cheaper for Korean companies to come here and grow. And you ask me, why a Korean company doesn't go to US? The competition in the US is much bigger. The cost of establishing in the United States, the cost of, of acquisition of customers is much bigger in the US. So Brazil is the most uh, like favorable place for a Korean company in the world to come and to expand. So it's really, and especially uh, that Samsung, LG, Hyundai, Kia have been here in Brazil for many years. And uh, Brazilians love Koreans. Brazil, so you are not taking the advantage of the culture that uh, really likes Koreans and it's a big market for Korean companies to expand. Thank you, Anibal. There is a huge synergy between Brazil and South Korea for technology sharing, market expansion, which will contribute to wealth creation of both markets. Relying on experts in startup, venture capital, accelerator will be very important to provide more stable conditions to the entrepreneurs in long term. Our expectation is to see an increasing number of com companies from Brazil and South Korea working together to maximize the potential of both markets to grow together. Moving on, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Professor uh, Rogério Lacerda, business researcher at Federal University of Santa Catarina, Brazil. Rogério Lacerda is a professor and researcher in the area of business development and decision uh, advising in dynamic and uncertain environments, typical of startups and technology-based companies. He's a former project management professional by Project Management Institute and has a large experience in advising companies to develop business and products. His topic is experience of a Brazilian startup Business opportunities to maglev technology. Professor Rogério, please. I think you are on mute. Okay. Are you listening now? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here in this uh, important event about your counter and uh, talk about opportunities of business. Which, which other? Myself uh, has introduced by Sue, and uh, my name is Rogério Lacerda. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay. I'm uh, I am Rogério Lacerda. Let me introduce. I'm participant of this uh, awesome project in Brazil called Maglev Company Brazil or MCB. Okay. Uh, the presentation has this summary about us, but what MCB is? Uh, um, we are a spin-off of Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, which has its core business as technology innovation, disruptive solutions and sustainability. In fact, the, the, the company has started by Richard Stefan. He's here. Richard, say hello for people. Okay, uh, he is uh, our CTO, our guru, our main founder. Uh, he has uh, a spectacular uh, experience in this technology. Okay, but our uh, CEO is Felipe Costa. He has uh, uh, he is a mechanical engineer. Uh, we've got uh, as well Elkin Rodriguez as senior engineer and myself. Uh, responsible for business development of this team. But what Maglev Cobra is a greener, cheaper, and simpler transport of vehicle using magnetic levitation, okay? Using superconducting uh, technology, okay? This technology is, um, has developed in Brazil and tested for five years transporting people in real world situation, okay? 
And this company is ready to market its uh, talk about that. But what's Maglev Cobra? What's the technology? Technology of Maglev is about uh, using a cryostat, and the cryostat has a property, magnetic property, to get uh, levitation. Okay, this vehicle that, that does not uh, touch the ground, and it is possible with technology. But uh, this is not a, a real uh, new technology. Uh, we've got a world stage here in the slide. Uh, there is uh, maglev, maglev in, in, in Chengdu, China, and left, German technology, in Seoul, in, in South Korea, in Linimu, in uh, Nagoya, Japanese. We start to research and uh, we have some experience and experiments of business and our product is a little bit different because this technology in the world state it's focusing massive transport of people okay using by cities and capitals and metropolis but our product is different it's about a light people mover Light people mover is a smaller um, vehicle using the same technology. It's a little different of technology. But the, Richard can uh, explain after if you can, if you want. But the, this uh, light people mover has uh, ability to transport uh, people over a generate demand generate of mobility as this target markets. Our target market is about airport, shopping centers, resort uh, entertainments, like a, a park entertainments, tourist spots, tourist spots, parking lots, huge parking lots, and high standard residential complex. Uh, th this is our target market. But what does this uh, target market needs? It's, uh, it's very different than uh, the, the markets of massive transport of cities. That's worldwide is focused on. Our focus is different. Is uh, the, these customers needs uh, since the landscape, link image with ESG agenda, comfortable mobility of users, and minimize impact on actual structure. But what's the, our value proposition? on these needs, link, linking with these needs. Okay, MCB, our product, offers a vehicle with a wide panoramic view. As you can see here, it's about a, a, just a huge window and the front and the side, okay? Uh, zero CO2 emission and zero noise emission because there is no use of fossil combustible and, uh, and uh, attraction with the wheel, okay? Reduction of internal travel time, headway, and a smaller installation space and smaller service structure, but because the, the vehicle is very small and agile for agile transportation, okay? And short track of uh, distance, but technology uh, can use by a, a huge um, uh, lens as well. But our focus of the, our product uh, is light people mover, okay? But what's our competitive advantage? Okay, this, our product is sustainable, virtual, virtually zero CO2 emissions, zero noise emissions, and low energy consumption. Uh, we are the cheapest levitation technology, the best deployment cost of all magnetic levitation technology in the next slide. In the next slide, we've got uh, uh, a price of them, okay? A, dras a drastic reduction of operation cost. Um, I'm talking about about 20% maintenance saving compared uh, to another modes. And uh, uh, the last but not least, uh, the competitive advantage of simplicity. Easy to operation, quick installation in comparison with massive transportation people, 
limitation does need control system, or say uh, 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 our product is autonomous. This slide shows show us the the comparing of price, the cost, the, the cost, average cost of our solution. Our solution is about 70 million dollars per kilometer. And our competitors, our rivals, it's about 25 up to 80 million dollars per kilometer. It's very fair cost. But why invest in, in our startup? Okay. Advanced stage of development, more than 20 years of research already carried out. Uh, it's important to remember because uh, Richard Stefan is a full professional of uh, Federal, uh, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in electrical engineering. Elkin, uh, he, uh, he is as well professor and myself in another Federal University in Brazil, the South uh, Santa Catarina. Okay, uh, open window to opportunities in sustainable transport technology fully aligned with global concept in ES and uh, ESG agenda. Be the first investor. The cap table of our company is about in these four hands uh, and a highly competitive solution. Lower cost per kilometer and operation cost comparing to another levitation technology. But what's our status quo? Okay, um, the MCB has mastered the technology, master of the technology. Okay, 20 meters, 20, uh, 200 meters of installed track with 100 and 1,000 people moving in this track. Uh, in, in Federal University of Rio, Rio de Janeiro. I'm not talking about a laboratory. I'm talking about a real track and transportation people, okay? Uh, our intellectual property is protected with patent, $3 million fundraising for innovation without a share cap table, the, our uh, company is a very potential of uh, R&D uh, fundraising and establish supply chain. Okay, supply chain is very important because this product, as you can think, and it is a complex uh, uh, product with, uh, uh, it's necessary a lot of partners, a lot of uh, equipment, a lot of knowledge, and we've got, um, uh, a blueprint of our suppliers to supply this solution right now, okay? But our next milestone is about early adopter for two kilometers uh, outside of Federal University, okay? But in order to do that, we've got a plan, and this plan is has started this year, okay? His MCB starter pack. That's uh, our offering right now. Okay, the starter pack start with a specific readiness assessment to um, evaluate if the customer uh, is ready about our technology. We've got uh, a business and project planning to understand the needs of this uh, prospect and leads and make some engineering adjustment and improvement of technology uh, technology to uh, install in this situation, okay? And handling objection to uh, the, the started pack finished with a detailed uh, work breakdown structure is a project management term agreed. And this WBS, it's important to, to to got the, to get a budget and the 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 schedule of this project in singular in singular situation. Okay, the last slide is a business opportunity. Okay, the MCB uh, tech is about a local tech. Our our understand of not uh, our technology. It's about our um, we've got a design. We've got a project management experience, intellectual property, but we don't go, we will not go to deploy the situation. The deployment is, uh, will be made by local factors 
abroad. Uh, each country, uh, there will be a factory to make the sales, marketing, and mainly logistics. This uh, is a real opportunity to Korea to get this uh, uh, the technology, patents, and um, intellectual property to offers in the country. Uh, not only in, in Korea, overwhite. We start this uh, this plan now, and we've got uh, opportunity to local partners. I mean, builders, deployers, engineers to have a blueprints, motors, and deploy another 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 stuff to deliver value to parks, cities, and other segments that light people mover uh, will be useful. That's my. That's my note over here. So I'm I'm pleasure to be here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your excellent presentation, Professor Jadio. So I have prepared a few questions. The first question is um how can someone interested in investing in Maglevi Company Brazil participate in this uh, business model? Okay, uh, our business model, you can see slides yet? The slides, okay? It's, yes. It's here. The slides uh, answer this question because uh, the MCB is just um, a knowledge process uh, enterprise, okay? It's a uh, creation of value, but the deliver of value uh, there will be for another another uh, companies local wide in the cities and countries that to deliver this uh, uh, technology, and that is important to investors think about to be our partners to sales our technology that is more uh, cheaper and greener than our uh, competitors. I'm talk. I'm not. Uh, I'm repeat. I'm not talk about a maglev with speed uh, focus or massive focus. It's just uh, it's light people mover to mobility of people in between uh, point A and B. Okay, and the real opportunity to builders and deployers understand our technology and get license of our patents that that's a real opportunity and, uh, and to to be our partners and investors of mcb because there will be another technologies uh, coming about uh, uh, after this um, light people movers thank you maybe you have already answered this question uh, just to reinforce uh, my next question is, is there any immediate offer to these markets? Uh, is someone, if someone wants to acquire the products, how can they purchase them? Can you share the sale process? Okay, this is a good answer. Yeah, the first angle is, uh, I want the MCB solution. I'm, I, I want this light people mover. How can I got it? You can got it uh, buying the started pack. This is the first step of our offer. That's mean uh, we need to understand the needs of uh, of um, uh, of a customer these leads and the this this asking is uh, finished with uh, a budget and detailed budget a detailed schedule of our projects to singularity of this situation of this light people movers because this this car is a product has uh, deployed over here in Brazil next year, but this is our vehicle to our needs. But you can customize, you can custom this vehicle for all necessity, all needing. Okay, that that's in, so the sales process start with over here. Okay, started pack. That's our offer over here. Thank you, Professor Rogério. In one of the past editions, we had a presentation of a South Korean startup that shared with us their technology and view on the Brazilian market. And today we had the pleasure to learn about Brazilian startup with the technology in mobility and energy. 
Hopefully, we will see an increasing number of startups from both Brazil and South Korea sharing their view on the market to us and strengthen the market with the different technologies and knowledge sharing. Finally, um, before we close our day two, we will now have two guests who have participated in the past editions of the Brazilian Korean Entrepreneurship Lecture Series to give us a testimony. First, I would like to invite Enhiki Dai Hongmin, Scrum Master and Business Analyst. Enhiki, please. Hello. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Enhiki, and thank you so for the opportunity to be here in one more edition. I participated to the previous edition of Brazil Korean Lecture Series, and the uh, interesting is to gain insights into what is happening today, and also to be able to listen to new market opportunities. Uh, I have uh, seven years work experience with a Korean company, and it started in the marketing area, initially in the management of new products to launch in Brazil, but I where I work at doing the market research, price analysis, or even the competition analysis. Then I worked with the sales team and helped them to set up internal process, develop reports and data analysis involving customers and sales performance, and also organization of corporate events and commercial negotiations. Uh, so in this period, I had a good connection with many Korean employees. And from this experience, I realized that when a Korea company plans to start its operation in Brazil, it's constant, it constantly does a market research in order to understand the behavior of the Brazilian consumer and the local market. And a fundamental point that is that Brazil is a country, but it seems like that inside Brazil, we have another or several countries. It, because of the diversity of cultures we find in each state. So as we have different cultures, I think the adaptation is the way I see it that's very necessary for business model to be able to operate successfully in the local market. As I have already noticed some cases of companies that trying to keep the current format of the business model without those kind of adaptation, and they got really rejection very strong and very quickly. So that affects business relationships. Uh, we understand that each sector has its own challenges and it's, the answer is not simple to solve. However, I understand that connection between Brazil and Korea is a way of sharing innovative ideas that can cross the two countries and can impact millions of people. Finally, I just want to say that I imagine that everyone present here is curious about Korean and Brazil relationship or already do business between the two countries. So I would like to invite everyone to engage in those kind of initiatives, such as the series of lectures, so that you can gain more knowledge and be more prepared to do good business. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Uh, now I would like to invite Felipe Batista dos Reis Pestana, partner at Grupo Planos. Felipe. Oh, hello. Uh, thank you, Sue. Uh, good evening, everyone in Brazil. Good morning, everyone in uh, Korea. Well, uh, my name is Felipe. I'm a partner at, uh, at Grupo Planos. is is an accounting firm specialized in um, uh, serving international companies doing business uh, in Brazil and Latin America. We are a 42-year-old uh, company. Uh, we were founded in 1980. Uh, we are 112 people in total, and uh, we're proud to serve uh, clients from 23 different countries uh, currently in their projects uh, in LATAM. Uh, and a large part of this experience uh, came from serving several Korean companies in their Brazilian businesses. Well, uh, it was my pleasure uh, to participate in the first uh, uh, panel uh, to, to in the first edition of the Brazil called Korea Entrepreneurial Lectures uh, back in 2016. 
And it's uh, great to see uh, how much uh, the event has grown throughout the years. And I'd like to uh, give my sincerest congratulations to the organizers and, and supporters uh, for this. Uh, well, uh, very quick words about Brazil. I'm not saying anything different that was said uh, uh, very well uh, throughout uh, this last hour. Uh, but just to endorse, uh, I have the same view as several of the speakers here. Uh, we are aware of the challenges of uh, the Brazilian market. Brazil is infamous uh, for the complex tax system, many different taxes, tax uh, time-consuming uh, uh, system for delivering dozens of tax returns per year, uh, old labor lo legislation, among others. This is not news. Everybody that comes to Brazil says, oh, it's, it's complicated. And Yes, um, it is. Uh, however, uh, Brazil uh, is one of the top 10 uh, world economies. Uh, the second economy of the Americas, uh, some people don't think about that, but the Brazilian economy is bigger than the Canadian economy. So uh, in the Americas, we're only after uh, the United States. Uh, it is the major market in Latin America uh, with many, many uh, good opportunities and profitable projects. Many people are successful in their Brazilian uh, ventures. Just to name a few, uh, maybe in some different areas uh, that were mentioned here because of my background uh, uh, and some facts, uh, Brazilian economy is recovering quite well. Bank of America last week uh, elevated Brazil's GB GDP growth estimation to 3.25 in 2022. Uh, Brazil is a powerhouse in agribusiness, the biggest world produ producer of uh, sugarcane, soybeans, coffee, orange, one of the biggest producers in the world for corn, pineapple, banana, co cotton, cotton, coconut, watermelon, and many other commodities. Um, we are among the top 10 energy producers in the world. Uh, 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 among the top 10 energy producers, Brazil is the one of the cleanest energy matrix. We rely heavily on hydropower for decades now, and we have a large untapped potential for solar and, and wind power, uh, which are finally moving forward and starting to have a significant uh, uh, percentage in the Brazilian energy matrix. Uh, especially with the recent regulation of offshore wind, which is an area that will uh, it's attracting a lot of attention and shall develop a lot in the next few years. Uh, we are the, the world's uh, ninth uh, oil producer, uh, when, and especially uh, with the commodity crisis, energy crisis we're going in uh, with wars, uh, pandemic consequences. Uh, this is a uh, very relevant point. Uh, we have a large demand for offshore vessels on the seismic and ex exploration uh, areas for oil and gas. We have the third biggest uh, airplane manufacturer in the world, Embraer Air, it's a Brazilian company. So after uh, 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 Airbus and, and Boeing, uh, Embraer Air is the third uh, largest uh, air, air, airplane manufacturer. Uh, we have uh, ProSub, which is a Brazilian program for producing uh, local submarine vessels. Uh, including uh, nuclear propulsion uh, vessels. So this is led by the Brazilian Navy. Uh, uh, Brazil has a satellite launching facility and is the only country in the Southern Hemisphere to have participated in the construction of the International Space Station. So having said that, uh, and I'm final finalizing, uh, it's definitely worth uh, to adapt to Brazilian regulations uh, the Brazilian legal requirements in order to seize the opportunities present. Uh, the complexities, they will apply <laughs> equally to all participants in the market, in, including the Brazilian companies. So our recommendation is uh, surround yourself as, uh, with uh, good companies that understand the market, that have abilities to take care of the local requirements, uh, allowing you to develop and thrive uh, your business. Uh, so. Thank you so much for listening over uh, this last few minutes. Uh, it was my pleasure to to offer these thoughts. Should any of you want to further exchange information, I'm more than pleased to comply. Thank you, Felipe. Thank you, Enrique and Felipe, for your testimony. Uh, one of the reasons why we keep organizing this series of lectures is the positive impact this has on in those who collaborate with us in sharing their experiences. Together, we are able to build a stronger bond between two countries, and having the support from the speakers and attendants is a very important motivation for us. So before we close uh, our uh, day two, 
I would like to invite Anibal for the closing remarks. Anibal, please. I want uh, to thank you very much, every of you. Uh, all the knowledge I got from the seminar was very good. I uh, learned a lot of things about the visa, technologies, all the like uh, economics of the Americas, etc. Many things I didn't know before, uh, but I want uh, really to reaffirm that uh, Koreans have been accepted in Brazil as our community uh, 50 years ago. I believe our uh, cultures, although very far apart, we are very close together, very close together. Uh, so I believe the Koreans should look really closer to Brazil. Uh, I remember when me and Su Jung in two nine, uh, 2019, me and Su Jung presented to one of the two biggest uh, companies in Korea, six companies and five IPO it in 2001 and 2002, 2001, 2020. I remember Su Jung, they IPO it on the NASDAQ. They IPO it on New York Exchange, and uh, the Koreans lost the opportunity of investing on these companies. So, what I tell to Koreans, uh, although we are very together, you should act faster, faster. Uh, that's my uh, suggestion to Koreans, because. We are very close. We have really good ambassadors, such as Su Jung, that can come put the cultures closer together. Uh, but you should act faster because the opportunities will, are coming and uh, you are probably losing many opportunities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aníbal. So with this, we would like to close our day two of the 10th edition of Brazil Korea Entrepreneurship Lecture Series. More panels will follow tomorrow, and we all look forward to seeing you in the coming panels. Thank you again for your attention, and have a great day to those who are in South Korea, and good night to those who are in Brazil, and see you tomorrow. Thank you Thank very you much. much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.